What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be doing updates to three stories that I've covered on the channel. The individual updates are small enough where I didn't want to do three individual videos. So I figured I'd put all three of them together into one uh, because a lot of people who watch my videos are interested in all three of these cases. So I figured they fit together. Um, first, we're going to be talking about the U.S. versus Maxwell case, an update we have there. Second, we're going to be talking about the Regina Roberts versus Prince Andrew case. We have an update there and also the closure of the Gabby Petito uh, murder case, which I've also covered on the channel. So let's first start with um, Gillen Maxwell. So as we have discussed in detail, Gillen Maxwell has asked for a new trial. She officially filed the motion. Uh, officially, she talked about it for a while, their lawyers, and finally they filed a motion back on the 19th uh, of January 2022, a couple of days ago. And um, so, yeah, they filed it under, under seal, but we know what the motion says. Um, let me give you guys some uh, background on this if you missed anything for any reason. Gillian Maxwell was found guilty back on December 29th of 2021. I covered the entire trial. The uh, playlist will be uh, listed um, up there and you can go watch the entire trial and uh, my review of things that happened afterward. Um, but basically, Gillian Maxwell's side is asking for a new trial because they're claiming that one of the jurors was dishonest during the jury selection process and didn't uh, disclose some relevant information about themselves during the uh, during the voir dire process, jury selection. And uh, because of that, Gillen Maxwell's Sixth Amendment rights to a fair trial were violated, and therefore they're asking for a new trial. OK, so. The, the court is looking into this. Judge Nathan has started an investigation into this, looking into uh, what the juror actually said in the juror, juror questionnaire and whether his lies or his lies. We don't know if he actually lied yet, but there's speculation that he was dishonest or he kept back some information about himself. Um, and that if if the judge finds that the lies were bad enough to rise to the level of violating um, Gill and Maxwell's Sixth Amendment rights, then the judge will have no choice but to have a new trial. OK, so uh, and even if the judge, for ex for for whatever reason, decides to have the conviction stand and Gill and Maxwell appeals it to the appeals courts, the appeals courts can reverse the decision. So Judge Nathan has has to really look at the Constitution, look at the Sixth Amendment, really judge if the jury was fair minded because Gill and Maxwell's side is claiming and probably claimed in those these this paper here in the motion that juror 50, he actually talked to the other jurors and told them about his own experiences being uh, being a victim of abuse in his childhood. So Gill and Maxwell side is claiming that he tainted the rest of the jury and skewed them against Gill and Maxwell. That's the claim that's being made by uh, Gill and Maxwell's lawyers. And and just if, if you just forget about the, the defendant here and how much you might like or dislike her, I dislike her very much, but you have to look at it from a constitutional point of view. You have to look at her like any other person. Imagine she was somebody you did like. Would you want her to have a fair trial or an unfair trial? And if one of the jurors were already biased when they came into the case and they couldn't see straight, that, that's what they're claiming, and they biased the rest of the other jurors, if that actually happened, then Gillen Maxwell has to get a new trial according to our constitution. The Founding Fathers set up our system so that innocent people don't go to jail. It's all focused on individual rights and making sure that the state doesn't imprison innocent people. OK, so that's why there's there's so much attention given to constitutional violations by the appeals courts. For example, they narrowly look at constitutional issues. The appeals courts are where a lot of constitutional uh, questions are determined and sometimes the Supreme Court as well. Uh, but sometimes they get resolved in the appeals courts where the appeals courts look strictly at constitutional violations. If they decide that something that happened in a trial violated the Sixth Amendment rights of the defendant, then they they can actually get a motion for a retrial or a new trial. Right. So nothing is settled yet. Gillian Maxwell is still in prison, but there are questions, legitimate questions about whether her Sixth Amendment rights were violated. How much, regardless of how much we dislike her, and I don't like her, but it doesn't matter because our constitutional protections apply to people who are bad people and also who are good people. It applies to everybody. Everybody's protected by the Constitution. That's a good thing and sometimes a bad thing when it comes to protecting people that we know are guilty, but that's just how the system works so that everybody is protected 
when our constitutional rights are violated, the courts will stand up for us as well. So the judges have to be fair. They have to weigh the uh, law equally, regardless of who the defendant is and whatever they're, they could be a murderer. It doesn't matter. Bill Cosby just got away because the prosecutors made a mistake and the, the uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court had no choice but to stand by the deal that this DA made back in the day. So the courts have to abide no matter who the person is, how, how, no matter how bad people in society think this person is, the Constitution views, it, views everybody in a neutral light and in an objective way as to what happened to them. They're only concerned about the constitutional violations, not about what kind of person this is. It doesn't matter what, how bad of a person Gillian Maxwell is. The rights that are afforded to her are the rights that are afforded to me and every other citizen of, of America. OK, so a lot of people are not happy about this. And um, and I have my own frustrations with this. I wish this juror never spoke up. But nevertheless, he did. And he had the right to speak up, by the way, just because we don't like what he said. And he's created a lot of problems doesn't mean that he didn't have a right to speak up. He did have a right to speak up. And he did. Now, when it comes to my position, I can't say for sure what Judge Nathan is going to do here, because it's all going to depend on how bad, how badly juror 50 lied on his jury questionnaire and during voir dire when he was questioned. So during voir dire, there's a questionnaire and there's also a section where the lawyers question each of the jurors, right? So so we have to determine exactly what questions he was asked during the verbal voir dire when he was being questioned and also what he wrote on the questionnaire. All those things have to be taken into account before we can make a decision. OK, so that's a long winded way of saying this, saying exactly what's going on, but that's basically what's going on. OK, so if Judge Nathan determines that there was enough of a constitutional violation, then Gillian Maxwell will get a new trial. And if Judge Nathan determines that juror 50's conduct would, did not rise to the level of a constitutional violation, then the conviction will stand and Gillian Maxwell will be sentenced on in June 2022. We covered that in the last video. OK, so that's that. Next, we're moving on to Prince Andrew. So as you guys know, Regina Roberts has sued Prince Andrew. I've covered this case step by step, the most important developments. Prince Andrew's side just tried to dismiss this case and it didn't work out for them. Uh, but this update is regarding the protective order that was uh, implemented and approved by the judge. So Regina Roberts and Prince Andrew together asked for a joint uh, protective order for both sides to protect their confidential information according to Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 26. Um, C, to protect non-public sensitive information that does not need to be disclosed um, to the public. Uh, and these, this is sensible stuff. This is normal stuff. These kind of protective orders are administered in civil cases where there's discovery going on and prominent people are involved or even just private citizens are involved. And I, I think there's nothing wrong with this because uh, when it comes to criminal cases, the public should know exactly what's going on because criminals running around affects all of us. But private uh, actions between two private individuals, I don't necessarily think that they have any obligation to let me know what's going on. This is not, this has nothing to do with me or the public. So this is not a criminal case. This is a civil case. So I think there's more arguments for privacy in civil cases uh, when it comes to, you know, how much information is divulged to the public. Um, but nevertheless, I would like, you know, all the information to be divulged because I covered this stuff, but I understand that they want to keep some things private. And this is perfectly normal to keep, um, keep certain, information like medical records and physical addresses of people's locations. So these are some of the things that are covered. Medical, mental health, or other health-related records, social security numbers, personal telephone numbers, tax returns, and uh, credit and banking information of any person, names of alleged minor victims of abuse, um, extracts and summaries of any information identified in A through C, and any other category of information given confidential status by this court after the date of this order with respect to the confidential portions of any discovery materials other than deposition transcripts and exhibits, the producing party or its counsel may designate such portions as confidential. So this is why some parts of depositions are uh, marked out. They're redacted because they deem them to be private confidential information and they have the right to do that. Both parties can challenge each other's uh, redactions. So the judge goes on 
on and on here for um, many pages regarding all the stipulations to this protective order and when it can and cannot be violated. Uh, basically, just making it very simple for you guys, any kind of private information that has nothing to do with the public interest or with the, with, uh, the specific allegations of this lawsuit will be kept private, meaning things like phone numbers and addresses and social security numbers. They're not relevant to anything. They don't have anything to do with this, uh, with this case, with the facts of this case that need to be adjudicated by a jury. So during during the discovery process, those uh, details will not be divulged to the public because we have no right to know that stuff. That's completely private stuff that's irrelevant to the case, right? All the material things, things that have to do with the allegations, they will be made public and they will be uh, published in the court papers uh, without redactions. Nothing that's material to the facts of the case will be hidden. So bottom line is the court provides an opportunity for private individuals to protect their private identifying information when when it's a civil suit like this. Protective orders like this are very routine um, and they're just normal part of the uh, litigation process. Okay. So with that being said, next we move on to the final story and that is regarding Gabby Petito. So I have covered her murder in detail on this channel. I did several updates, talked about it. There are videos online if you want to know the uh, breakdown of the time of when they started their van trip and when she was killed. You can watch videos. Uh, I believe ABC News and many others have done good videos putting together the timeline of her murder. So if you want to watch that, go check it out. I'm not going to explain the entire thing here. I'm going to assume that you guys know exactly how things went down. So the FBI concluded their, uh, their investigation finally um, into the uh, murder investigation of Gabby Petito. So basic, the basic story is that Gabby Petito and Laundry started a YouTube channel and a travel channel specifically where they were traveling across the United States. I believe they started back in New York and they traveled across the country and they documented their travels, all the places they went to. And, um, and I believe back in September, she was reported missing and the, uh, and the FBI started their investigation back on, um, September 12th. They eventually found her body and uh, that was due to the uh, tips that were given by the public and they thanked the public here as well for their uh, for their help after the body was found the coroner determined that she was killed through manual strangulation I covered the uh, covered the coroner's report as well. After the uh, manner of death was determined, law enforcement focused on their prime suspect who was Brian Laundry. There was a manhunt, a national manhunt for him. They eventually found Brian Laundry a couple of months ago. Then it was determined uh, on autopsy that he died through a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Um, his a search of his belongings um, led law enforcement to a notebook, which revealed to them that he claimed responsibility for Petito's death. It was very obvious that he was most likely the suspect, like 99%, I said in my one of my last videos, uh, because there was nobody else had any other motive. He was the only person who had access to the van and to Gabby. So it was it was very likely that he was the killer. And he admitted it apparently in his uh, in his book. I wish we saw. Uh, I wish they gave us the quotes here. That would have been nice. Um, but there's no reason for them to keep anything uh, hidden at this point because the investigation is over. The FBI went to Gabby Petito's parents and they briefed her, briefed them on her case and they're closing the case up. Uh, there's no doubt that um, Brian Laundrie is the one who did it at this point. So they're con concluding their, uh, their investigation and this is their last uh, press release where they thanked all the people involved here and also they thanked the public for helping uh, helping in this case. Um, some public tips helped a lot in finding Gabby Petito's body. Okay, So those are the updates. I'm glad that Gabby Petito's family has uh, some closure here. Uh, there's no doubt that Laundry is the one who did it. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a trial where he's held accountable, but he killed himself. So he knew what he did was wrong and he didn't want to get caught and go to prison basically because th that's where he was headed as you guys know if you watch my last two videos i firmly believe in the death penalty and i think he did get it uh he got it by his own hand so he knew what he did was wrong and he got the punishment he deserved so i i believe that justice was served uh, obviously it's a tragedy that she had to die in the first place but justice means that after a crime is committed we try to get uh, the best outcome for the family and for the victim and the person who killed her being dead is justice in my opinion um those are the updates i have for you guys on those three stories. 
obviously I'll be covering um, further developments in the Maxwell case and the Andrew case. And we're closing the book on the Gabby Petito case. Okay. And with that being said, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell and press all for future videos and share this video with other people who might be interested in the cases I cover here. I give a rational evidence-based analysis of legal cases and also law enforcement actions uh, that are taking place across America. And if you like my work and you want to support my show, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below and also in the end of the video. And uh, you can support the show for just $1 a month and your support will be much appreciated. With that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, peace.